All right, so today I'm flying with Paul. He has a new CFI at the flight school here. Uh, so he has to get checked out in all the aircraft. Uh, hey, this Oscar is now current out to number 3022. Today we're going to go up in the Diamond, and this is also his first Diamond flight. So he gets introduced to the world of DA-40 flying. I've already given him a prediction on the things he's going to struggle with. We'll see how many of those... Uh, Come to fruition. How many of those come true, right? <laughs> uh, we're going to go up, we're going to do a few maneuvers, get him to the plane, do a couple landings, and uh, then come back. And give him the thumbs up for flying the diamond. Okay, so before you get going on that, the two things we didn't do, we were supposed to go to the AUX chapter, GPS page. Uh, we have two GPS receivers, we need, what, four satellites per receiver, so there's our first one. There's a second one. That is in the checklist. The thing that is not in the checklist is once you do that, is go to the last page of the AUX chapter. PS1 and 2 signal There you check. go. Right. Okay. Occasionally, we'll get a red X on GDL-90. That is uh, uh, attached to the ADSB. Two causes of that. One is if your heading indicator is out, say you're too close to the hangar or something, and that's out, that will cause that. All you have to do then is taxi till this comes back on. Okay. If this is running and you get the red X in GDL 90, you pop the transponder breaker, you know, to get the red X here, and then reset it, and it'll go away. Okay. Uh, we're not sure why it's been like that since ADS. Then that solves it every time. Uh, but you, if you take off with that, tower's going to call you and say, you know, they're not seeing you, transponder, and you're liable to get, uh, I believe it says traffic device error or something in your there. Okay. Okay. Clear to land, runway two. All right, so we got no wind today. If I don't get greasers, you got to uh, you got you no got wind to blame. Explain it today. <laughs> All right, I'll close that. I'll bring the canopy down. Um, my, so my, I was gonna say my pre uh, pre takeoff, it's a giant question mark pattern, and it covers everything in the checklist. So if you start over here, we go landing light, strobe light. We've already set those boys. We got flaps to take off, fuel pump. Full prop, about three quarter rich. Full is tank, uh, and it looks like it is right. And then trim the takeoff. So if you follow that, you'll catch everything. everything. Tower Tower Diamond Five Two Six Delta Sierra, hold short two, ready to go. Diamond Five Two Six Delta Sierra, runway two, clear for takeoff. Proceed on course. Runway two, clear for takeoff. Proceed on course. Two six Delta Sierra. At left center, right is clear. All right, confirm runway two, verified with heading, center line, thousand, you're gonna go full power. Number tower, skyline, speed alive, Charlie, nine miles from the north, go for a fifty nine. Number one seven four zero, Charlie, Cockwood, enter the left downwind for runway two. Enter left downwind for runway two. One seven four zero, fifty five, but. All right, you kept her pretty straight. You didn't get happy feet. That's good. Alright, let's climb out at 67. Alright, we need to pull back fuel, see we got the red on there. Just just pull that mixture back a little bit. Sometimes at full throttle, if it's too rich, you'll get that warning on there. Yep. Okay. The plane does not like full rich. Alright, so I usually go about 500 AGL when I pull the flaps. Okay. Once she settles out from that, we'll pull the RPMs back to 2400. We only run full RPMs just till the initial... Okay. Alright, we'll climb up to 25 until we're clear of the Bravo. Alright, don't want you to off. You, if you want to run 24 square level or 23 square anywhere in there is fine. Okay. Am I going to leave this at 24 and bring the throttle back? Yeah, cruise that. Okay. Yeah, you want to run 24 square, I'll bring that back 24 inches. We can leave that at 2400. Um, there is a chart. Uh, the POH that gives you the best combos for different altitudes. Okay. Uh, down this low, 24 square, 24. All right, so now we got that set, we'll go to our engine page and we'll lean her out. I like to have the EGTs about 1475. The easiest method I've found for leaning this thing. If you just get those charts in between that 1450 and 1500 marker, you'll be fine. If you just want to go up in this vicinity, okay. um, see if we can get high enough to do a little air work. Good on takeoff, you didn't over control it, yank that back. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I try to give everybody a heads up on... Uh, what I've seen in the past. 
Yeah, the first time you said it, I was like, okay, that's the one thing he wants me not to do. Because <laughs> if he's saying that, everyone does it. Uh, that and the happy piece. So you passed, passed takeoff fine and fine. <laughs> well, what we can do, I mean, I like to have a little, I like to be at least 4,000 when I do stalls. Uh, we'll get up here. If we can find a hole, we can probably get on top. Okay. All right, so this is working good. So I have, I, I got to mention this. So on a number of my videos, this stall horn has gone off and people go, you got to fix the stall horn. Something wrong is broken with the stall horn. So just so everybody know, I have replaced the stall horn reed. Um, the spec on this plane is the stall horn is supposed to sound anywhere from five to 10 knots above the stall. The old one was sounding 13 to 15 knots. So this has brought it back. And the comments were, well, that's going to teach everybody to ignore it. It's going off too much, you know. But it wasn't that far out of spec, but uh, per the manual, the only fix is to replace the reed, which I did. I hope that makes all my viewers happy. Okay, so if you want to, like I say, if you want to get to fill the plane a little bit, or if you're good, we have steep turn is what I like to start with. Today, so uh, we'll just uh, come back around, do a 180. We'll uh, clear the area as we're coming around. Okay. We're using this as our clearing turn. We'll uh, get set up with a reference pointer. Altitude is going to be 7,000 when we start this maneuver. Your speed uh, four steep turns, I'm guessing, is 100 knots around right, that. Right, right. So here are your maneuvering speeds 94 to 108. So for the way we're loaded, uh, 100 is entry speed. It'll probably put you at about 19 inches to get down to that. Once you start into the turn, I would power it up to about 22 inches. Okay. Seems to be a good number to keep, her, keep your altitude. Now for five pilot ACS standards, pretty five degrees of bank, but obviously we're always going to test the commercial when we're CFI, so uh, we're looking for 50 degrees of bank. Okay. All right, 7,000, we'll bleed that last two off. There all right, go. so we'll start the first one to the left, we'll come all the way over to 50 degrees of bank, and what we're going to do is we're going to increase the power, make sure we keep that back pressure, but we're not ballooning up. As we roll out to that 210, we'll roll wings level. We're checking the right side, we'll come to the right. Make sure we're keeping that pitch level with the horizon. Coming all the way to 50 degrees bank, and a touch of power. Oh, that sun is brutal. Turn so you're altitude. under 45, so you need a little more bank if you're trying to go to 50. There you go. We can utilize a little bit of back trim, that's going to help alleviate sure. that pressure. Looking outside, we see our altitude, and we'll just nose a little bit. Wow, I really can't see anything. Uh, no, I can't blame you on that. But you, yeah, you snuck her back altitude in your altitude. And, uh, Blew your heading just a little. I, I still think you were in spec though. Yeah, yeah, it is tough to see. Okay. All right, so what I like to do, and we'll have to find a spot, I like to bring her down in full dirty slow flight just maybe turn a little bit here and there and then take that into a power off stall and my method for that is from slow flight is, is nose down get to approach speed at 75 power and then off. bring her back so with these clouds I don't know if you want to try to find a hole to do it in I don't know if we want to waste time climbing um, I'm not sure we can do our pitch down and stay above the clouds is my only yeah, concern yeah we can try and get up to 75 here okay we'll bring All right, that's something too if you want to do a power on stall first we can even get a little more altitude Okay. Yep. Yeah. So basically, just full power. All right. So we got 80 knots. We're going to start at 7,500. We're on our heading. As soon as we go full power, we're going to make sure we add that right rudder in. So here we are. We'll go full power, add in that right rudder in. We'll start pitching up. We're looking for the first indication of a stall, so buffeting or the stall horn. And there's the stall horn. So we'll just pitch slowly back down to the horizon. All right. Let's do one more. Take it to the brake. All right. We'll take it to the brake this time. To do it to the stall horn is too easy. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, we're right there. All right, so we'll go back to 80 knots again. This time we'll 7,700. All right, 80 knots, 7,700, go full power. We'll pitch up. Make sure we're adding that right rudder. Stay coordinated, staying on our heading. We'll just keep on slightly applying back pressure until that full break. That's it. So we'll pitch down the horizon and we'll That's recover. Good. Just maintain as much altitude as you can. So you can see it's pretty undramatic. She just kind of goes, okay. Yeah, we got to make sure with that power on to stall too, we're not, when we recover, we're pitching down, 
but then we also want to make sure we're maintaining that climb rate because we're simulating on takeoff right. we pull back too much on that yoke we get into a stall so we still need to be climbing away from the ground because that's where the danger is uh, that is correct all right so now we got a little more altitude to work with so you can start slower down let's do full dirty uh slow flight all right, so slow it down here blow vfe so we'll go first notch flaps it stabilize and then we'll go second notch flaps. We're just going to hold it here and let that airspeed bleed off. Okay. There's your horn. So anywhere right in there, high 50s is fine. All right, cool. So we're coming up on 8,000. We're still, our airspeed's creeping down a little bit, so we can add a touch of power. And we can use that trim to help us. You can see why people uh, talk about the air horn. So it's creeping down a little bit more. Yeah, just uh, probably want to get her back up to upper 50s. Perfect. If you want to hold her, that's fine, but... Um, part started about 59. All right, so let's see. Probably 21 inches. Altitude to give. All right, about there. All right, yeah, I like that. That's good. All right, let's do a 90 degree turn to the left. All right, 90 degree turn to the left, so go directly north. All right, cool. All right, so now let's do our power-off stuff. Let's pull the power, nose down to 75, simulate approach speed, and then take her up into a power-off stall and recover. Okay, cool. All right, so go power idle, and nose down to 75. All right, there's 75, so we'll slowly increase that pitch up. Don't need to yank it back too much. Hold about 10 degrees pitch up. There's the brake, so go full power, pitch down the horizon. Right, yep. Just notch flaps up. Go ahead and clean her up. Alright, I thought that was all good. Why don't we just do uh, one or two landings at Davidson and uh, we'll head home. Ooh. Have to find us a hole to pop down through. Yeah, we might have to uh, just do a 180 and pop down through this hole. Which. So what are your first impressions of the Diamond compared to what you've been flying? No, I actually like it. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty nice to fly. Yeah, uh, initially my thoughts were, I was like, no way you're going to be in that thing. I will just <laughs> rip apart when you do a steep turn. But, uh, no, it's actually very nice, very responsive. It's an adjustment with the idle stick. I think you got the stick and you got the push rods on the ailerons and elevator instead of uh, cable. I just think that's where the responsiveness comes in. Yeah. So the one button you have here that you don't have there is this guy. This is a temporary autopilot disconnect. If you push this, you can steer manually and it won't undo all the settings on the autopilot like it would when you press the red. Okay. If you just want to do something temporary but keep what you have in there, you can use that button. You get temporary disconnect, that's right, nice. Right, right. Whereas if you push the red one, it all goes away and you got to start over again. Uh, before landing checklist, so make sure is rich RPM. Auto forward. Airspeed will reduce to 91. That's looking good. Oops. That first notch. Ashboro traffic 1058 Charlie is turning. Autopilot is off, brake pedals. Do we have pressure? Uh, slow down to 80. Alright, runway is clear, final is clear. Davidson County traffic, diamond 526 Delta Sierra, turn file for 186, full stop, Davidson. Alright, one white, one red. Went too bad for your first one. Interesting. <laughs> Definitely a different feel. You didn't drop her from too hard. You had her fairly straight. Not bad. Here's a uh, hot topic of debate question. Do you think that people, when they're first flying, should start out in a six back, or do you think? What's your take on? It? I don't. I don't think it matters because. Especially when you're starting out, you're not using all of the approach plates and the instrument stuff. Right? So basically, this is presenting the same information as a six-pack. 
yep. just in a different format. So to me, flying private, I don't see a big difference. Um, I, you know, I had one YouTube guy writing, well, that, that G1000 makes a lazy pilot. You're a lazy pilot if you use that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why he thought that. I, I responded to him. He never came back at me. But, you know, I basically have the same thing here. Now I could see, all right, approach plates and stuff, but my response is most planes with a six-pack now have a GPS unit, which gives you most of the functionality you have here just in two different... Yeah. I think the concern, especially with new students, is over-controlling the aircraft because all the information is instantaneous. There's no lag between what you're getting on your instruments. Right. And uh, the primacy issues that come with when you're doing maneuvers, especially people who look outside the plane, they're just looking at this and so... We have a little plastic thing that will go over this that we use for partial panel approaches on an instrument. I'm not afraid to yank it out with a private pilot because if I catch them staring at this too much, yeah. I'll stick it right over there. And I think the only window that shows is the CDI. That's good. And, and get their head out there. Because uh, the one thing with this that's different than a six pack is this vertical speed responds lightning quickly. Yeah. And if you stare at that, you will never be straight and level. It's just been down like down, a yo-yo. Whereas a, a, an old vacuum gauge, you know, it's like an old man. It takes a while to actually tell you what, what you're doing. Six five kilo contact Charlotte, have a good day. Two five six to your kilo over to Charlotte, thanks. Not too much on the flare, but just just go shy when you drop. Not terrible.